Hey everyone, it's episode 93 of the Double Cross Anime Podcast. I'm Wooper. And I'm Mario. And it, we're finally done. We're finally done with all four of these seasonal shows. And we're done with winter. Thank goodness. Um, so I don't think we've ever had all four shows come to a conclusion at the same time before. But uh, this time we've got ID Invaded, uh, Magia Record, Eizouken wo Te wo Dasuna, or whatever. I don't know. And Chihaya Furu. All finished yeah. up. Um, and so that means we have next week off. We're going to do the Genius Party compilation anthology type films. Mm-hmm. But first, got to get through all this. And uh, volume nine of Poon Poon. Right. I don't know where to start. Mario, where are we starting? Um, we can start from the worst. <laughs> well, up we may to... have different opinions about that. Yeah. All right. I mean, we pro- we probably have the same opinion. I assume that you thought Magia Records finale was the worst. I um I'm chuckling between Magia Record and ID Invaded. Really? Okay. Yeah. I mean, I guess I would too, but I was actually very disappointed by one of the other two finales as well. Right. I I think I know what uh which one you prefer refer to because I think I had the same feeling. But uh, let's get to uh Magia Record first then. Okay. Well, I'm. I gotta tell you, dude. I am devastated to learn that Yachio has disbanded the team. <laughs> um, I'm, that's I'm, that's I'm what she to... says to. That's what she says to Iroha as they're like before the the OP as they're riding away in that gondola. Yep. Um, she says, "I'm disbanding the team." What team? <laughs> what? <laughs> what team? What are you talking about? Like, oh no, 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 no. Oh, this is so bad. And no, no, you, no, you no. saw I, the announcement about the second core, right? Yep. I, I, I did saw it actually. Like I, I know that they are, uh, they announced the uh, second core. I did, I when I look at the uh, after credit, I didn't see anything. Oh yeah, it wasn't announced as part of the episode, but they there was an announcement like separate from the airing. All right. Uh, um yeah. I I, so, I I think I know what she means by disbanding the team because uh all the girl <laughs> had been uh crush crushing in her in the house she wanted them gone. <laughs> Does that make them a team? <laughs> yeah, see, see, I see, see, I I remember she did mention before that she didn't think of them as friends. Yeah. Um, they're just like freeloaders to her. <laughs> and then she says to Iroha, I'm disbanding the team. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Just the inconsistency in uh, terminology is staggering. Yeah. Well, I mean, it could have just been a terrible translation, but assuming that the spirit of, of the term is like accurate. Um... <laughs> and, and, and the whole thing in this episode is very uneven as well. Like last week we saw like the hotel, like, like the whole team. This week though, we just saw like Yachio and and Iroha, and like at halfway point, I, I was wondering like where the hell are others uh, um other uh, members of of the uh, wings of Magius. Like it is supposed to be their hang their, their high out, right? And I I guess and Yachio. I'm, and, I'm not sure that it's the one hideout though. They they yeah. seem to be like a massive group based on the scene we get near the end where Toka is like addressing all the magical girls in Kamihama City. Like yep. she's some huge political leader. Yeah, and, and that's the thing as well because um like previously we I, I think I like for me, I don't know for you, I think that me for you, the uh uh Yachio friend who was yeah, like her former one, one her former the, teammate. Yeah, I, I think she was like one of the ring leaders of of the uh of the uh, wings of Magius, but turn out that it's not the case. It, it's Toka who just appeared like in one or two episodes ago. Yeah. Well, didn't we know about Toka before because she was in Ui's um, yeah. room, perhaps? maybe I didn't go back to check on that because I honestly couldn't be bothered, but yes. it's it's true that Mifuyu has been like more foundational to this show so far right. than Toka. But Toka, with this episode, has stepped into the spotlight, I suppose. And um, another issue that I have was uh, Mami. Like we did, we <laughs> we saw her. Like we barely see see her in this 
in in this core and then and then she she appear uh being i think um uh she she was um under the effect yeah like her her eyes are kind of flashing um between a darker color and like a light like gold i think we're supposed to assume that she's under the control of toka or the wings of magius or what whatever yeah um and so she gets to shoot her million guns a million times and then and then Say- sayaka appears it's, it's just like <laughs> all over the place well, a... i assumed sayaka was going to make some sort of appearance in this yeah. season because we had already seen kyoko and mami yep yep and i assume that the other two Members of the original five will show up in the second core, um, Madoka and Homura. No doubt. Mm. I mean, for merch sales, I guess. Yep. Um, and then um, Iroha, she will, uh, she, uh, like... She turns into a doppel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, but, but afterwards, she, she, like, fall off the cliff and disappear. Yeah. Yeah. And well, this, see, this the you, you can see the whole you can core. see mommy's ribbons come up from the abyss that she falls into. You see the ribbons come up and like ensnare her and pull her down. Right, right. Huh. And then uh, Yachio is rescued by Sayaka before she can like dive into the abyss after them. So yeah. these two characters are now separated. Uh-huh. Uh, so I assume that the second core will involve like that'll be one of the story points is like Yachio is trying to get back to Iroha and rescue her, well, while Iroha is learning about like the wings of Magius perhaps and like learning the backstory about what happened to her sister and stuff because we have to like we need to when I say need I don't mean that I feel the need to learn because I'm done with it all this mess but that is completely unresolved you know yeah. So Iroha is probably going to be the character through whom we learn about like the whole history of the Wings of Magius, Ui, the wish that she made, etc. And Yachio might actually take more of a central role since she'll be the character who is like doing the doing the rescuing and like the investigation and stuff. And uh, Ui is uh, never been hurt again. Like I don't even know. I like like they they haven't resolved anything about. Uh, it will have quest to fight Yui at all. Well, it never really met. It was it was just a, an excuse to kickstart the whole yeah. story, I think. Yeah, and one of the reader comment about like there there was one um, character who appeared in the first episode, so she was like the original characters of of the series. Um, I think when you I say have... original, like she wasn't in the mobile game. No, she wasn't in the mobile game. Oh yeah, yeah. So, so she was uh the new characters that make a uh, base that make just for this series. Uh-huh. Her name is Kuro Ku Kuroe, and yeah. she was voiced by um Hanakana. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So I, I I would reckon that she would appear again in the second core just because you know like some some of the really big names voicing her. Right, it's kind of like watching a a procedural like uh, police show yep. and seeing in the credits the name the name of like a really famous actor as a guest star. You know that they're the killer. Yeah, they're gonna be important. That's right. And it, yeah, it's it's even work in in movies and series. You know. Like if 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 we see some famous face like in, in the cast of you know like the in the middle of a mystery or you know uh kill um detective things, see see got they're gonna be important. Yeah, uh, and you would assume that this Kuroe character or however you say her name is gonna be important too. But honestly, I don't like I don't even know if you can judge this series or interpret it based on traditional rules of like uh production and and casting and stuff because it just ended up being so like i I don't know man just boring uninvolving uh scattered yeah i i wouldn't say boring because i i don't feel bored but uh like the the other words that you mentioned was 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 spot on (laughs) well usually when something is Bo- it is scattered and that I get bored Unigating, by that. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, yeah, that's that's boring to me. You know, um, but what would be best for them in the second core? Uh, after Iro have fall into the the abyss, she gonna try Rico, Greg, and Nanachi to explore the the abyss. That's please don't cool. pollute a show like Made in Abyss with a character <laughs> like Iroha. Like she has to be in the some character from this show has to be in the running, like the conversation for worst anime character of the year so far. Ooh. That is shame because I remember I really like her in the first episodes. Well, I mean, the at that point she was like a, a a small character in a much bigger, like more mysterious world, and it was it's you know it's easy to find her more interesting because the show is more interesting at that point. Like, mm-hmm. and we don't know her place in it yet, but it ended up being that her place in it was to just go wherever the the plot of the week tossed her. Yep. Um, and not have too much of an impact on the the series. As a whole, and I mean that was people's complaint about Madoka originally. Like the yep. the mm-hmm. first series back in 2011 was that Madoka was largely passive, mm-hmm. but given how the series ended up and the the way that it like increased her karmic burden with the time loops and stuff, mm-hmm. uh, it all in preparation for that huge wish that she made. I think it ended up working out pretty nicely, actually. But I don't see that happening with this series. Um, um, yeah, just like the pieces aren't coming together. We're halfway through at this point, and I don't see a roadmap. Forward. I, yeah, I don't even like. I'm, I'm not, I'm not very clear about the power how that's work. Even if we will learn about the power for the last few episodes. Yeah, that's true. Like when when they're fighting mommy. Yeah. Uh, in that terribly elaborate and also uh disjointed action set piece yeah um like iroha makes it makes it clear through her expression i guess that she's about to use her doppel and yachio's like oh by the way i can use a doppel too (laughs) yeah i mean we already knew that but she just says it so casually (laughs) and then they both bust out their doppel and they're like yeah time to fight now that we have it's like dragon ball z you know, like, yeah. oh, they just assume their next form and the fight continues. And I don't know that uh, because uh, the doppel was supposed to be, um, I, I don't know, like a, a place to reverse uh, the uh, magical curve from becoming a witch. And now they use the doppel as a weapon. And I yeah. don't even know like how they're going to, how they going to, how they can summon the doppel. It's like they have to. I don't know. Uh, they have it to has make their to do with, show like, to uh, become uh, like foggy in order to uh, turn into the witch and becoming a doppel. Right? Like how how that even work? I don't know. There there there's a shot of um, Iroha's soul gem soul gem being kind of like tainted, and Yachio holds hers up, right, and like absorbs some some of some of that tainted like black mist yeah, or something. Right. I, I I don't I don't know. I don't uh, I don't even care. Yeah, me neither. I'm about done. All right. Um. Do you uh have any uh thought about Yakio wish? Like she wished to to survive, and that's yeah what she is. You know, like so was she sick? I don't even remember. Yeah. She. I don't even remember. She she wanted to survive <laughs> in order to in order to protect other other team member team members. Yeah, remember remember the flashback where she was like a model or something? Yep. And all the other model girls were gossiping about her, but she was the leader. Yeah. Was that supposed to be metaphorical? I think that's supposed to be her her backstory. Before So she actually was a model. Yeah, be, before she become a magical girl, and that's what I think. But we didn't learn that she was ill at any point, did we? That she was sick? No, she she wasn't sick at all. Then, just, then why did she wish to survive? What was the deal with that wish? Uh, the the survives just mean that uh she want to survive in the world. You know, like she she doesn't want to be, uh, bullied by other team members. So, so she I, just wanted like a successful career as a model, and like yeah. in her social life, she just yep. wanted it to be smooth sailing. That's what she wished for. Yeah, survive. Yeah. Wow, that's so boring. <laughs> yeah. You know, see, 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 
like 13, 14 years old, you know, like that, that, that the voice that all the, like most of the girls will, will, will do when they are at that age. Not surprised. I, guess, I, don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm bored. Yeah. Well, it's a massive, uh, like it, it's not really a disappointment because like based on, you know, like everything we've seen so far of my year record, I think this, uh, this ending come to come to expect but still um i'm i'm feel let down by it like yeah. nothing would resolve at all yeah well that's because there's a second core coming up this isn't the end yeah uh it's just another lousy episode in a long string of them yeah yeah mm -hmm. so right. how about id invaded yep should we move on to id invaded Yes. <laughs> um, now here's a show that was not boring to me, but right. still managed to be completely ridiculous. Yep. And uh, I mean, I, I, <laughs> I, I actually, I actually be honest, and I tell you that I was like halfway more in the in in the finale, especially when it comes to Momoki and Kiki. Like, yeah, that's. Do, Wait, how could you be bored during that scene? Because that's a scene where he's like walking through, walking up the stairway, and they're they're like defibrillating him, and and like he's vomiting in his suit. Yeah, that's just so funny. <laughs> All right, because the thing is, we we haven't seen any uh, rela relationship established between Momoki and Kiki before. Like like we we saw them talk one or twice, but it 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 mostly between. Um, uh, Kiki and uh, Sakaido a relationship that they dwell into and now we have like the whole thing about you know the past and like the special chemistry between them you know they have like a, a special past that Kiki always know that Momoki will come and, and end it her and, and put her out of miseries I was like oh what? well I, I do remember that she asked him she asked him to kill her. Momoki. Uh, didn't she? Yeah. I mean that's that's before. what she says. Alright. Is that is that before? Is that in this episode? Before. She was referring to her time in the hospital. Did um, this he actually asked Momoki to do that? I don't I I, I yeah. don't call that though, All right. Well I I remember that she asked Sakaido to to end to end things or to end to put an end to it. Yep. Um, and he interpreted that as like, oh, kill all the serial killers, which he did off screen yep. when he was in his little dream within a dream type thing. Uh, and then later she clarifies to him that what she wanted to end was her own life. All right. But that, uh, that was her but, with Sakaido. It's not her with right. Momoki. But in this episode, based on her conversation with Momoki, and I think there was like a, a brief flashback, not a, not a full on flashback with dialogue, but just like an image that they put on screen mm -hmm. with her in the bed and him in the hospital room. She must have asked him to do it as well, I All guess. Right. But it's true that like, for example, the scene where he accompanies her back to the, the little pool yep. where she, she's like held in stasis in that liquid. Uh, so she, she can prop up the Mizuhanome and the whole unconsciousness diving system. Yep. He like his, his voice actor, the voice actor for Momoki's character went so above and beyond the call of duty with that scene like honestly i was impressed with the performance that he gave but upon further reflection i was like dude why did you have to try so hard <laughs> your character is like a huge joke you're vomiting on yourself for, for like the duration of the finale and <laughs> you 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 can you can fault him for for doing a good job yeah well i mean props to that guy man i i don't know who the voice actor was i should have looked him up probably but uh, that guy ought to get the like the lead role in as like the mentor to a, a shonen protagonist in some big like jump adaptation in the future. Oh my god! Uh, just talking about the dialogue, <laughs> it's so it's so funny. Like all the dialogues, like re yeah. remember when um when Sakaido or even John Walker um uh, re refer Hodomachi, her name. And she was like, no, you know, in this world, I'm not holding my tree, um, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, she's, uh, I, don't I can't, 
uh, it's Sakaido, and then like Anaido is um, Fukuda's guy. Yep. And then Uraido is uh, John Walker's guy. But who is Hondo Machi's guy? I don't remember. All right, all right, all right. Um, okay, Miyo Miyo Hichirido. Oh my god, that's the name. Hijirido. Yep. He. he yeah. yeah. I, I I do remember that now. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, dude. The the dialogue was. I I mean, I I felt that John Walker's character was the biggest um, offender when it came to bad dialogue because it was all like, "You and I are the same." Yeah. You know, and let's have a let's have a little chat, you and I. Like all the typical monologuing, grandstanding, villain type yeah. lines. Yeah. yeah. Were yeah. present, and the way that he was like trapped in that chair yeah which ended up being the uh the, the, what's it called the cockpit the, yeah the cockpit yeah and i didn't understand the logic between him being sent back in time to the exact moment before his death like i i got that that's what happened he was yep. sent back to the moment before his first kill but why what was what was the reason for for that connection no i i think that's uh it was controlled by uh, Hondomachi and uh, and Sakaido to put the time back to there. So it is is it just but but how? That's what I'm saying. Like no idea. How how did they arrange? Because he had died. He was dead in the present. Right. Uh, so how did they send him back to that particular time? Um. <laughs> uh, I have no idea. You know, it's it's it's, it's <laughs> a dream. dream. It, it's it's a dream, so they can do whatever they want. <laughs> Dude, that's, that's what point, honestly, though. that's what it comes down to, with a lot of the quote unquote logic behind this entire system, the show has created for itself. Especially when it got to the the whole um, midway through was when it introduced the the concept of like a cockpit within uh, the the well within the well. Yep. When that was introduced, everything just flies out the window. Yeah, and I don't even know what uh, the the cockpit that was supposed to be. Fukado put that before before he died. Uh, is that like one of the cockpit that uh, we see before in in our previous episodes? Or is that uh, like a brand new, whole new cockpit? I I don't. I'm not sure. I don't, dude. I don't. I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well. I, don't, I have no idea. Yeah. And I mean, honestly, anyone who can explain this show, I feel like is working way too hard uh, yep. to meet it like where it is, which is like insane land, insane land. I don't. And, and, and you, you know, like even like the, uh, remember like the, the other team, uh, the detective, the, the, the other uh, team members, they, they was crushed by the power. And then uh, it cracked into like small pieces of rocks, and then they they learned that uh you know like it attracted to the uh, the south. Yeah, but it was actually a neat idea, but they you know like they they put too much thought on that. And why was that a neat idea? It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> the, the whole thing. <laughs> They're giant the, boulders. The whole thing doesn't make any sense. <laughs> well, I mean the the very beginning of this episode where. <laughs> Like the first shot was a guy whose whose skin was like turning into paper, and got shredded up. All right, I don't remember that. Okay, well, but the, yeah, yeah, the yeah. Very right. be- yeah. The very beginning of the because I kind of liked episode twelve, the one before this one. Yeah. Um, but the very beginning of this one made me think, oh yeah, this is this is getting this is getting good. Like, reality is dissolving, uh, for all these people in this building, mm-hmm. and Kiki is causing it to happen. So we could we could see like some massive outbreak of just I, I mean i don't even know what the consequences would be of people like their dreams becoming reality even mm-hmm. and all of them like blending together and i i was just intrigued by the possibilities but then it spends half the time within um john walker's mind i guess yeah and that doesn't make any sense because john walker's like such a flimsy villain yeah. and then it spends the other half of the time <laughs> following like gigantic diaper suit man yeah, <laughs> walking up the stairs of a a building to meet a care of a character with whom he has like little to no connection. Right, and 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 the most funny uh funny dialogue that I uh that I see in this episode was one where Sakaido, 
uh, talk to Konomaichi about you know like being a brilliant detective. I learned to rely on other persons on you know like in another world. <laughs> I think I remember what you're talking about. Yeah. Well, he he says that like the most important thing is that you have faith in, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, some some divine being or something from another world. Like you have to have faith that that will save you. Right. Some something along those lines, and it it just read to me like a, an appeal to religion almost. Like you have to, you have to have faith that something else exists beyond this world. Yeah. Uh. And I was like, what? <laughs> yeah. God. I, I don't know. Like the important the importance of dreams, I guess, is what was meant to be displayed there. Hold on. So um, so in the end what happened to Kiki? So she she was put back into uh the thing. So that's uh, she gonna make the uh the Mizuha handle again. Yeah, well she her her unique uh consciousness, like its ability to connect people to the minds of others or to their dreams or whatever like that's right. that's what powers the entire system of id yep. invaded huh. and um that's why she has to get put back into into stasis in her little pool there it, and then the this the series does the the whole uh like circular ending thing where there's another new character. Like, do you remember the ending of Psychopaths, where at yep. the very end it goes back to another rainy crime scene, and there's another new yep, yep, yep. Uh, rookie cop. It like this show does the exact same thing because huh. uh, there's another new rookie. It just so uh, problematic. The message, you know. What's like, the message? The 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 girl, you know, like uh, she's a human being. She put she being used for, you know, as a, as a kind of tool. She have a, a moment to break out, and then finally she learned that you know like her best, uh, her best option would be you know like going back there, you know being a tool because it's it helps someone else. Well, no, it's it's more complicated than that. Like she causes suffering for other people wherever she goes. She yeah. can't control her abilities. So like for the good of the human species, I think she has to go back into containment. Uh, I mean, think about what she does to this building and the, like the mental anguish and torture that yeah. other people are afflicted with because yeah. of yeah, it's she can't exist in the real world. Like it's not even an option. Yeah, she 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 also mentioned that she catch or she got the dream from another world, from person well, from another world. Yeah, no, she, I think she says from a faraway land, faraway and I land. I think the implication there was another country, like the word kuni was used, I think, oh, right, right, right. Uh, Japanese for country. So uh, she's starting to like be able to telepathically receive information and con and like connect with people who are half the world away. Hi. Uh, so it's it's implied that like if she goes free, it's going to be a global pandemic, like it's going to be coronavirus tier shit. Yep. If she is let out of let out of her uh, little containment pool, so she has to go back, and that that's why Momoki's voice actor gave such an impassioned performance because it's like, you know, he he feel it such a big deal. Yeah. Oh, by the way, what was the deal with uh, the scientist who engineered the Mizuhanome? Him yeah. being buried on Momoki's property was that ever resolved? Um, I th I. I, I think I can get the implication of his uh fate. Like he um he and Chung Walker was there uh using um uh using Kiki for the uh visual handle uh device and then he he got killed by Chung Walker. Uh Chung Walker didn't say that he, he killed anyone. Yeah, he I mean remember his first kill was himself. That's why he right. got teleported back in time right before that specific moment but he manipulated serial killers to kill other people so yeah he i might, mean but he they might manipulate other people to kill that scientist in order to you know like uh put everything into silence yeah but that wasn't made clear was it like nope. we don't know for sure how that guy died and he is buried on momoki's property like yep. i don't know maybe momoki really did kill that guy because he was so mad at what happened to his waifu yeah you know, like he has this deep connection with Kiki, and so he was pissed about the fact that Mr. Science uh, yeah. turned her into a gigantic computer brain. 
and he was like, "I'm gonna kill you and bury your corpse in on my in my lawn." Uh, Maybe that's what happened. <laughs> all right, have you watched our future diary? Like the whole thing? Uh, I dropped. I dropped it. All right, but I know about like the parallel universes and stuff. Spoiler alert. All right. Yeah, because uh, because someone uh bury uh the other cops in in their garden as well in in the south. I'm sure that people like to killing and burying people on their own property is like a staple of uh, you know, like horror, <laughs> horror detective type stories or whatever. Uh, yeah. All right. <sighs> All right. Oh, so... how about the how about the scene where Hondomachi uh, leaped up out of the the pool of blood where there was a giant baby um, oh, in the yeah. background and she was riding a shark and it bit off. Uh, What's his face? His arm. Do you remember that? Yeah, John Walker. That's that that pretty cool. <laughs> Jeez. All right. Um, how how would you uh, you rate ID Invaded as a whole? Like, uh, I would. I don't. I don't know. It? No, I would not recommend it. I think you and I have reverse opinions of ID Invaded and Magia Record. Right. I'm bored by Magia Record. You're bored by ID Invaded, but we both think that both shows uh, like pretty much failed. I I'm more in some elements of uh, ID invited, but not so whole. I I still like the idea, the uh, central idea of the you know like going to the dream, and not dream to uh going to the subconscious, to uh, find out about uh serial killers. I like yeah. that central ideas. I don't like the characters at all. I don't like how everything involved. I actually like the uh uh, uh the very bad. Dialogues, I enjoy. You like the bad dialogue, yeah. I enjoy. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, 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 no, I wouldn't recommend this. I mean, if you if you want to be impressed by the the first couple of episodes and then disappointed by what comes afterwards, mm -hmm. sure, like go for it. But no, just watch something else instead. Don't waste your time. Right. Um. All right. Next house. Sure. The one that I think do? we both are disappointed about in the finale. I don't know if it's going to be the same one. What's what's yeah, yours? It's okay. Okay, it's the same for me. All right. Yeah. Um, because there are some elements that I still uh, wasn't quite sure, like the uh, uh, the audios file. Like, uh, who who make that audio file? Do we know? Yeah, it? I wasn't. I wasn't satisfied by the whole last minute adjustments plot that they right. cooked up yeah um it's just, we we just know so little about the the music and and the sound design and all, all of that it just it just gets introduced at the end of episode 11 as the proverbial wrench thrown into the works mm -hmm. it, it doesn't really feel like uh, a a big part of the production that they had been planning like it it doesn't it doesn't feel as though that was something that could have gone wrong because it's outside of the show's typical scope they just have a character who is barely a character who handles all the sound stuff and she's just there to be like oh whoops this doesn't line up so i mean i complained about that last week and then right. i don't think the show really delivered this week it didn't didn't convince me that it was the right call yeah like they they're all supposed to be like uh really know about this stuff like they um they have to do everything by themselves in order to create that and to to think that like something really obvious like the entire audio track with uh with like the wrong tool would be you know like uh just they just found that found that out in the last minute it just doesn't make any sense to me yeah it it really doesn't hold up like there was an email from the composer who made only one track for the entire thing who said hey uh i i think this is i think this is really good you're i hope you're gonna like it okay bye yep and and, and it it ends up being the same length as the track that they were expecting to accompany the dance tune but then in the end the finished product that we see for the second half of the episode that same track is expanded and used to cover the entire 15 minute short or however long it is. So that doesn't add up. Yeah. Like it it can't have been the length that they were expecting it to be and also be used for the whole like that doesn't make logical sense. Yeah. 
and uh, yeah, and even like the plot that um, Ashakusha have to uh, you know like changing on the the end of the anime in order to match the track. I just don't t- don't like that idea at all. Well, what's worse is that the finished product is like incomprehensible. If I hadn't known what the story was, and I was watching that, I'd be like, "What the fuck is this?" Mm. It makes no it makes no sense. The use of arrows to like uh, indicate what the cities were like before and then what happens afterwards. Yep. Uh, really clunky. Um, the fact that seventy five percent of the runtime is composed of like UFOs shooting at each other, and you still do e- even through the use of visuals to like, I don't know, show pollution of the the Kappa's, um, like their environment. You know, the whole they live yeah. underwater, and the dump trucks are like I, I can I can piece that together because I know that it's about a war between Kappa Kappas and humans. But if I hadn't known that going in, I would have been like, what is the context for this gigantic battle? Uh, it's a bit of a let out because I have been enjoy as you can up into you know like even even in episode eleven I still enjoy it pretty much. Uh, I just find that uh, this act is a lot weaker than the other two act. Especially yeah, and you like, you were worried that that might be the case. I think going yeah, back yeah. like a month. Yep, I I I, will, I was worried that it 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 was the case, but uh like. Even then, like episode nine, ten, and first half of eleven was still, you know, on par. It's just like the whole yeah. Whole I mean, episode nine was great. Things that you know, it's a bit, it's it's a letdown for me. Yeah, and it's not it's not the only letdown of this episode. Honestly, I mean, I feel like this. I honestly feel like ID invaded. Uh, the ridiculous, uh, nonsensical ending that it had is about on par with this with this episode, because. <laughs> There are so many elements of of this finale, like this method of wrapping up these girls' stories that make as little sense. Mm -hmm. Uh, For example, the trip to Kamike that they make um, in order to sell their DVDs. Wasn't wasn't the whole focus of this arc that they had to get everything finished on time so that they could produce the DVDs which had the full package so they could sell them? Yeah, I think and that isn't was that what intent. Asakusa did? Like she adjusted everything so that the music would be able to fit, and they'd have all the sound totally ready to go. And I I remember they said something about, uh, it's not finished in time, or something. Yes, yeah. So the there's a sign on their booth that says, if you purchase a DVD, you will get a link to watch the full version online with sound when it is finished. Yeah. <laughs> but wasn't that what they were rushing to do? Yeah. Yeah. It it like it honestly it doesn't all come together mm-hmm. at the end. Like not just it it's not just emotionally that it doesn't really feel fulfilling. The the story is Have not egg. there. Oh god. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and the, the 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 depiction of Komike as well. Like there were just a whole bunch of still images of like a small crowd getting slowly bigger and then slowly bigger. Yeah, and a yeah. Few people stopping I, by their booth. Like Komike is massive and it's always hugely packed. Yeah, yeah. I can uh, I can understand why uh, the show did that though. It was from the point of view of Asakusa, who was uh, basically you know like uh, sleep deprived at the time. She doesn't feel like she. Uh, she is staying in the uh, in the comedy, so that's why she just feel you know like a bit of, of like a hangover. So I can understand why they so put that visually. It, like but that. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I I don't think that was like the intended uh, effect. I just think they got lazy. There was a lot of visual laziness in this episode. Like very early on, when Kanamori is is kind of has her arm around Asakusa's throat and is like strangling her. Yep. Yep. Uh, it's just two frames. Her arm, like, over her over her throat, and then like slightly shifted up, so it's kind of touching her chin. Mm-hmm. And they both have static facial expressions. Mm-hmm. There, like at multiple points in this show, actually, there have been some really some scenes that really demanded expression, mm-hmm. uh, and instead the animation was ultra limited. And I can understand why they might go that route because they have to save, they have to dedicate a lot of their time and effort for the the actual animations that the Azokin society makes um 
But this is a show about like the the joy and the visual potential of animation. And so if you are going to cut corners the way that your characters are sometimes forced to do, um, it should it shouldn't be in, in ways that take away from like that message. The message that animation is powerful and that you can you can use it to to tell any sort of story you want and make your characters behave and emote exactly the way you want. You can't turn around and then like have your, your characters at odds with each other, but the expression of it be so lifeless. Yeah. It's just, well, it, <sighs> well, well, it, it, I, I would say that I'm a bit disappointed at this finale, but it's not like the, uh, the, uh, the thing that, you know, like turned off the whole, the whole season for me. I, I still yeah. enjoy the whole, the whole season of Educate greatly. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this, for me, this is probably top, like, one of the better anime of the year material, yep. let's say. But I'm the sort of person who does put a lot of emphasis on, yeah, um, man. yeah, how a show wraps up because it, it indicates what sort of thought was put into the, the entire project. Like, the the arc that it's going to take or just the the conception of the series as a whole thing and not just a bunch yeah. of individual yeah pieces. i understand it makes sense but uh consider as you can is split like in three different arc so uh, i i would say like it just doesn't work in the last one um the first two the first two acts were were, were pretty um complete yeah yeah, but the show I don't think is complete because it is a show. You know, it is a it is an anime series. Yeah. Uh, so I mean, I, I it'll probably still end up on my like my top fifteen of the year or whatever. Perhaps even the top ten, but I'm pretty disappointed. And I mean, I'm looking for Dora Hidoro's finale tomorrow to kind of be like the number one show of the season. Yeah. In light of the fact that this one botched the ending, at least in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, yep. Still some great episodes and still a pretty good show. Yeah. Just sadly doesn't stick the, the landing. Yeah. Man, Lenlo gave this thing like a glowing review too. Well, I, I, I was actually agree with Lenlo's review like uh, 90 out of 100 up until, you know, like um, a, f a day later when I watched the finale, I was like, oh, <laughs> the finale doesn't stick with me. Yeah, um, it's 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 so up up until uh episode eleven, I I would say that I, I agree with Lenlo's uh rating. All right, it's all right. Yeah, just just shows, see, shows all right. Just see how one episode can change your opinion. Yeah, lot. well, I mean, if it's if it's the first or the last episode. I mean, those are the two, for me, those are like the two big ones. Uh, obviously, they're all important, mm -hmm. but a first impression and a, and a final impression, those are going to stick with you. Yeah, that's true. All right, let's stick with the one that I think uh, that uh, did land, uh, stick the landing. It did for me. She had a full rule. Yeah. Um, I, and it was so interestingly... Uh, you know, mm -hmm. put together as well because it mm. it moves away from Chihaya and Taichi in mm -hmm. the in the aftermath of that big confession, and it goes to Arata's perspective, and somehow it worked out. Yep, yep, that's right. Um, I I think like this is what the episodes that I I feel the um, the greatness like that that I felt in the in the first six episodes of Chihaya Furu. So I, I I feel it just like on the same level. Oh wow! Yeah, interesting. Okay, because because like uh, this episode focus on our three main characters and especially Arata and you know like the direction they're gonna do to improve themselves. They they all pretty good. Like it, even like Chihara who got like the least uh screen time in this episodes, we we can still see that uh she learned to um. She learned to to uh to do something with her career, and uh, I guess, but I I feel like that's been one of the weakest aspects of this entire season. Yeah, is the whole right. Chihaya wants to be a teacher thing. Yeah, that's right. 
Uh, That's I agree as well. Um, and and learn to uh, waiting for uh, for Tai Chi to come back. Oh my god. <laughs> it 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 sounds lame when I say it, but uh, like the the show does us pretty well. Is it? Are are you saying that Chihaya is expecting him to come back? Yeah, yeah, but like uh, he he remember she remember like some of the flashback with with Tai Chi. Oh, uh, right. When when Tai Chi says say about I don't time will come back. Uh, yeah, he's he's gonna return. So let's get strong. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, and like prepare for for his return. Yeah. Yep. And the the way that that's that's reverse when she gets the text message from from Arata saying I know Tai Chi will come back so let's get let's like level up in the meantime uh, and wait for did he actually send that note I yeah. think I think he just texts that um you know like um I'm, I'm I'm creating a a a club right now that's it. no it wasn't it wasn't just the photo because. I mean, it, it, you see just the photo at first, yep. but then the show goes, it, you know, it plays the OP. Uh-huh. Um, and it, we see that little clip show of like highlights throughout the season. And then Chihaya hears his voice saying, I know that Tai Chi will come back. So let's, let's get strong in the meantime. That was like the, the actual text that accompanied the photo and right. what he sent to her. Okay. So the show is like calling back to what Tai Chi said in, in near the very beginning of season one. When they were on the train, they had visited uh, um, Arata yep. in Fukui. Um, and he was like, no, I'm not going to play Karuta again. Get out of here. Yep. You know. And then he you know, he chases after the train on the bike. So they, they can see that he like has still has some desire to reconnect with them. But then what Taichi says to her on the train is, I, kn- I know he's going to come back. So let's, yep. let's make sure to train and, and be ready. So... This show's echoing that, like nine years later, for us as as audience members. Right, right. Now it's Tai Chi who has fallen away from the game, and it's Arata who's saying he'll be back. It's like Karata has this inescapable, like it, like it, it's destiny. You know, mm-hmm. it has this inescapable pull for the three of them. Yep. And they're never going to be away from it for for too long. And, and actually, uh, really, I think it really works. Yep, yep. Like, because I, I I think I think you know that I'm I'm not really a fan of you know like the three main characters uh relationship to each other, but this episode make me actually care about you know how they, uh, how they gonna get things stronger by themselves in order to improve their own relationship. That I think that that's that neat. Yeah, I mean it's all rooted in their childhood. Yeah. The. The the I, I don't know the the time that they spend together i guess so the yeah the more precious moment that they uh, spend playing uh karuta to each other yeah and and in particular tai chi and arata are always flashing back to that time e, um, e, even um even uh arata flashing back to that time as well when he think about like his most pleasure moment when playing uh, uh, uh karuta karuta yeah, yeah. the karuta. the time the period when he was having the most fun with it yep so yeah, yeah. It's, it's really and I, I think that all the time that this episode spent um teaching arata like lessons about how to uh be a leader yep. and w- mm-hmm. what it's like to establish a, a club and be responsible for it and try mm-hmm. to go outside his comfort zone in order in order to make things better yep. for people who are just starting to learn the game or just starting to be competitive yep all of that groundwork was necessary for that text that he sent to Chihaya to be like to resound more deeply. That's that that that's right, and it just uh you know like um, it's it's work as well that you know like he gains a new perspective and and through that he actually appreciate uh Tai Chi and uh, Chihaya more because how they you know how they making the club from scratch and. And that uh, club even you know like win the national cup. So like it is it's like another uh, level of appre- appreciation that he has by you know like uh explore exploring himself out of the comf- comfort zone. It's pretty good. Yeah, uh, I just I really loved the man. This the thing that really made me appreciate this episode a lot was just what came at the very end. The fact that. 
Tai Chi and Arata's positions are now like reversed. Yeah. And 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 I be, because one of them came back to the game before, I know the other one will too. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I, it struck me that this has really been Arata's season. Huh. All right. I think I, more I than think that's easy Tai Chi seasons for me. <laughs> no, but I don't think so, man. Like Tai Chi, think about how Arata was like a central figure in the the whole arc. I went when I was doing my series review for this show. I mm-hmm. I went back and I looked at the episode count. There were twenty four episodes, and fourteen of them were spent on Arata. the no the 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 Meijin and Queen arc, like starting from the qualifying tournaments and moving oh, all right. the way through mm-hmm. the finals at Omijingu. Yep. Um, and Arata was way more central to that whole plot. Yeah, than Tai Chi. Con- consider that. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Chi Hara doesn't even, you know, uh, play in that tournament. And right, Chi... because of what happened in episode seven. Yeah. Jesus, <laughs> episode <laughs> seven. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. I hated that. I hated that too. But <laughs> yeah, I mean, it happened, and I try. I've tried to move on from it as as best I can. Right. But the thing is, now she's not even. She's quit the Karta Club as well. Yeah. And it was so interesting how that piece of news was delivered. Like Arata learns through a text from no not for he learns from sakurazawa the yep. the coach at uh, fujisaki high school that yep. both of them have quit and pr- previously we only knew that taichi had actually quit we'd seen shihaya uh, studying but i don't think we knew that she had actually left the club until he heard that all right it i i think i take it differently that um i i just i just think that arata was misinformed uh, not us. Uh, I think Chihara is still in the club. I'm. I'm not. So, I'm not sure which which one is correct though. I'm. I'm pretty sure I mean, that um. Uh, uh, Chihara doesn't uh attend to any of the of the club uh activity, in this um. Uh, in this episodes, but I I don't think that she pull out from from the club altogether. Yeah, but do you, do you remember? Okay, so I I guess I can understand that. But do you remember the scene where Sakurazawa says to him, uh, "Chihaya, quit." Like Taichi and Chihaya both quit the club. Yeah, you remember her saying that? Yeah, I I, I think I, I just think that she was misinformed as well by um uh, by Poku. It's a Poku by the other guys. Porku? No, no. The, you, mean, you mean by like uh, Nishida and Sutomu? No, they no. call them Porky and Desk Tomu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the subs. No, no. But the other one, the uh, the one with glasses from uh, the other club. I don't remember. He he has like a nickname. Uh, the okay. one who who never got into uh, rank eight, and now he's the captain of the other team. He doesn't have glasses. His you're talking about retro. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, he, he doesn't, doesn't have, have glasses. glasses. Excuse me. Oh, okay. So you think okay. Uh, I mean, I think she's quit. I think she's quit, and it was just very—it was a, like a bold choice for the show to deliver that piece of news. Yeah. Um, after it had shifted focuses, and and Arata was like serving as the main character almost. And I wonder what the beginning of season four is going to be like. Like we know that Taichi is is training with with Suo. Yeah. Um, after he meets him as the cram school. Yeah. Teacher. So yep. that's you know Taichi. I mean, I I assume that Taichi is gunning for, like, Meijin status, which yep. is badass. Well, well honestly, well. like, I'm excited to watch what's gonna happen. And I mean, I know Arata is as well because he made that challenge to Suo publicly, right? After the the finals, um, so like Ta- Chihaya is now the least invested in Karuta out of the three of them, right? Whether or not she is still part of this club, she's not attending. Yep, but. Arata's formed his own club, and Tai Chi is like leveling up in in like the the snow covered mountains where nobody can interrupt his training, you know, with like the strongest Karuta player maybe in history. And she hides over here like, yeah, I'm going to be a high school teacher. So what is season four going to look like at the start? Right, but uh, at the moment though, Tai Chi doesn't want to do anything with uh with uh Har- Karuta, from what I know. What are you talking about? We saw we saw him training with we, he like followed Suo into the Karuta Society. E, all right, huh. all right. He's train he's training with Suo to like 
he's 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 seriously like making a run. I don't. Do do you remember seeing him follow? Like he's looking at a message on his phone or something, and Suo is like, "What are you waiting for? Come in." All right. And Tai Chi follow. Tai Chi's like, "Okay, I'll be right there." Yep. All right. Good for him. Um. Another one, another point I want to make is that uh, this episode also have a lot of uh, small moments from supporting characters. I remember like Su Sumire, that's her name. Yeah, Sumire was she was uh she was cool in this episode yes, for sure. She was really cool and uh, and also like uh, the teacher of uh, Chihara, like the old man, you know, who always say wise word. Yeah, Fukusaku Sensei. Yeah. yeah. I remember him saying, learn the pain of creating something back in like episode two. Yep, yep, yep. That was, that left a big impression on me. Right. <laughs> All right. So I, yeah. I, I do think that yeah. the only uh, biggest sacrifice in this whole season is Chihara herself. She's not, <laughs> as, she's not as strong, as, she's not as memorable as like the other characters, especially. The Tai Chi, uh, Arata, and the, the whole supporting cast. No, the supporting cast got shafted too. Well, Porky, uh, Destomu, they were irrelevant. Yeah, I, I was thinking more about uh, Inokuma. Oh yeah, well, I mean, she's she's basically main character. <laughs> she's she's practically the main character of like the the first half of this season. Um, yep. which is fine by me, you know, like. You can change the name of uh, the show to Inokuma Furu, and I will. I'm I'm on board with that. Well, her middle name is Chihara as well, so maybe Chihara Furu is about her, not her not middle name Chihara. is Chihaya. Yeah, yeah. I for I guess I forgot that. Right. That's that's why her fav- favorite cat is the same cat of Chihara Furu of Chihara. Right. Chihaya Furu no so what you wanna Nice. It's so yeah, I, what what am I gonna be a reader? When am I gonna be a, an official reader for the Meiji and Queen matches? I think it's so I think the the like the tone of voice they use is so cool. It sounds like so melodic mm-hmm. kind of. It it sounds like song. Yep. Yep. Uh that's I am always really impressed by that whenever they like mm-hmm. one of the major readers, one of like the the, like the pillars of the Karuta reading world comes yep. and does some event and like they you know they'll start to read the the opening poem and the show will cut to like scenes of nature and like all yep. the characters like their hair gets blown back by the wind i'm always like hell yeah <laughs> i'm ready <laughs> right well i i i think it's it's big i, I think it's like it's, it's it is essentially a poems right so it's like reading the poems, basically. Yeah, they are poems. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why. Huh. Yeah. Uh, they're great. I love to learn Japanese just to read those things. <laughs> I mean, they've they've all been translated. Yeah. <laughs> or do you mean to like to read them as in to read them like the readers do? Yeah, yeah, so that's that right. Yeah. The... Yeah. Oh well, I mean, I I mean, you just heard me do it. I can already do it. I don't even know Japanese. <laughs> Good job, good job. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. All right. How would you write Chihara Puru uh, in regards to other other seasons? Uh, this is my least favorite oh, of the three. Interesting. Yeah, Chihaya, like piecing out and being uh, a side character in her own show mm-hmm. and the way in which that happened in the Cursed Episode 7 mm-hmm. was bad. Uh, the Karatu games were the least impactful of all three seasons like the show never really followed through with them it just kind of cut to the end result in a lot of cases mm-hmm. uh the side character like the the side characters from mizusawa the high school mm-hmm. them being irrelevant hurt because like i was a fan of you know nishida tsutomu yep um but there there were there were other ways in which it succeeded like introducing new characters you know kumo yep. was really great arata this i think this was his best season yet Mm-hmm. Um, Haruda Sensei, like making his little run to the getting back to the Meijin yep. match, even though he lost, was cool. Learning more mm-hmm. about Suo, interesting. Mm-hmm. Some good stuff, but some bad stuff. Right. So, where does this stand for you, uh, just in general? 
How do you feel? In general, I think it's, it's on par with like the other two seasons. I would say that um, my uh, second season is still my favorite. Uh, it's better than the first season though. So it, it, it's like in between those. Okay. Um, yeah, Chihara is not pretty good uh, in, this, in this season. But uh, <laughs> like opposite f- from you i think tai chi is got got a lot more of a personal uh development than arata so the two of them Dude, are, you could yeah what one. you could go back and just like <laughs> record every time they appear on screen just like yeah. measure how much time they spend on screen and it's going to be arata by a landslide all right i i, I just thinking like from the beginning until now i think that tai chi had had, had been true more well, of course, yeah. If you are you talking about from episode one through episode seventy four? No, 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 no. Uh, of 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 this of the of this season. Oh so no from, way. That 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 is what I think. But you know, like we we uh, we agree to disagree on that. I think. Well, I mean, we don't have to agree to disagree. I could literally <laughs> go through every episode and measure the screen time. <laughs> and um um yes, Ino Inokuma is a great addition to this cast. Still not not very really fun of sure. I think he's he's alright. Uh, well, we haven't seen the last of him, you know. We miss, he and Taichi have this thing going on now. Yeah, it's, that's right. But but like it, it's the most we've seen from him so far in the three seasons, and I still yeah. not really that open up to him. Um, yeah, I I agree that the the show could have done more or it could have done it differently. Yeah, um, I want, he's too much of an oddball still. That's like, right. Yep. I want so to, s- to commit in one direction or another regarding his character. Yeah, I want to see more from Shinobu, but uh, regarding her characters, I he he see like you know like standing alone in uh, on the top, and that Chihara always look looking up to and always you know like try her best to rival her. I don't think that we we we're gonna see a lot of you know like uh, episode focus on her characters. Then we we like we we like it too. Uh, that's just like one of the sacrifice that we we have for you know following the show named Tihara Furu. Yeah, it's 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 just a very different season. It's much more focused on like top level play than it is on yeah. high school clubs or team tournaments. Yeah, that, that's just like true. the the focus of the show itself had shifted. Yeah, um, which is not a bad thing. I think I think it just you know like expand its uh, universe. Yeah, I mean, I think some things were left behind in the process of that expansion. Right. Uh, and I think that actually is a problem, yep. but it's not, it doesn't like damage my opinion of the show yep. um, too much. I still think it's really good. You know? Yeah. Hopefully we will see that uh, season four coming soon. We don't have to wait for another seven, eight years. I'm, yeah. Who I'm, knows? I'm not, I'm, I'm not waiting that long, but I don't want to wait that long for another season. I don't think we'll have to. I mean, I think the reason that it was rebooted is because the manga is coming to an end soon and they want to sync up the... Yep. Hopefully. I think we'll see season two like next year probably, or season four next year probably. That, that'd be My cool. guess is we'll have to wait nine months right. for the next one. All right. So, um, yep, let's get on to Poon Poon. All right. All right. Let's get on with it. All right, we ready? You, you, yep, I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I mean, I'm, I'm ready. What, what do you? Did you like this volume? Um, uh, I think it's like the least eventful story volume that I see, see that I have read so far in Put Put. Um, is it okay? Yeah, well, well, dude, I couldn't say. There have been nine of these suckers, and <laughs> it's not as though I can like read them all back to back because we're doing it weekly. So I, I don't know. It's it only has ten chapters, all um, right. then, whereas oh, then, most of the other ones have had eleven. All right, yep, the same. <laughs> so that could contribute to the uh, fact that it's less eventful. But I mean, the fact that we see we were reintroduced to Aiko in chapter ninety, but then she doesn't pop back up until ninety nine. Yep. Um, you know, like especially if you're a massive Aiko fan, like you are, uh, you could just be viewing everything in the middle as like filler. <laughs> um. I, I just know, like, like, at this point, I just know that, you know, Aiko will appear at the end of the chapter just to, you know, like, 
um, put a bit of the cliffhanger to us. You know, like oh, I could appear. Oh, I could finally meet Pum Pum, and you know, and she disappeared for for a whole volume after afterwards. Do you think she's not gonna show up in the next volume? No, no. I, I, I think this is uh the point now that you know they're gonna meet up and they're gonna do whatever they 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 promised themselves doing. I mean, we still have almost fifty chapters left to go. We have like three more volume. I think because uh, there's the, five more. Uh, the timeline is much now. You know, like they uh they reached the six month of you know of um of Pegasus. Um. Uh, it's like doomsday proclamation. Yeah, that's right. So I I think this is a time now that uh they meet up, and you know, they're gonna destroy themselves. I think. I'm I'm waiting yeah. for that. I mean, I I suppose we'll see. Uh, there are four more volumes actually. I just looked. There are thirteen. So ten, eleven, twelve, and thirteen. We have left to go. God, it's like uh, like a quarter of. Of the whole the whole length. Well, th- there are more chapters per volume than average in these last four. So there's 147 chapters altogether. We've made it through 100 basically. So that's roughly two thirds. All oh, right, all right. A little little bit more than two thirds. Um, but it it does seem as though things are moving towards the end because we get so much focus on uh, Pegasus in this volume, yeah. probably more than ever before, and not just Pegasus, but also his family history mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and it we we get some subtle information about how his his family and their cult business is tied up with Ico. Mm-hmm. We see Ico attending his father's funeral. Oh, that's his father's um, funeral. Yeah. That's I and I, I, his, I was his father the... was the person who started the cult that her mother was a member of. All right. That that's why like in in his the apartment, they're always like uh, uh, women's, middle-aged women like, chanting his name. There's a <laughs> one to let him, him go. Uh, well, that's not an apartment. That's like a business. Right, right. Um, I can't, what is it called? The Cosmos Health Center. And I think yeah. I think I remember um, Poon Poon and Aiko as children walking by that building and hearing the chants coming out of it. Right, right, right. That's the same one, yeah. Yeah. And so we know that her mother was also trying to sell that water to Uncle Yuichi in mm-hmm. a particular scene. And we see that that water is what's, you know, that's the building where it's being sold. Um, or that that's their, like, headquarters, their base of operations. Yep. Um, and we learn all of this by, by following Seki and Shimizu. Yep. So it's interesting the way that those two are kind of folded into the cult story. And in fact, like, we know as of chapter 98 or 99... Um, Shimizu is now a member of the Pegasus Ensemble. Yep. So every everything is like Poon Poon himself is still um, like depressed and moping around, and he ha- he is yeah. not really connected to all these other events. But a lot of the other characters in the story are. Um, I have a question though. Does Seki really know that Shimizu was a part of that cult? No, Seki doesn't know. Hmm. Right. The reason that Shimizu went off to join was because he and uh, Seki had a falling out because Seki called him like useless and retarded. Yep. Um, because um, of the the moment where he he says, "I you know I don't want to stay away from home too long. I got to go back and check on my mom." Yep. And her mom was already dead. Right. As, as, as we learned from from the flashback, I, I think the way that uh they established the um, uh her uh his mom uh, dead by accident was pretty well done. So we first hear from Seki, you know, just like one of his uh questions, like to his uh, construction coworkers. Yeah, that's right. If um uh, if uh, he had to choose be- between his uh, best friend and uh, and his preferred mom, who who would uh they they like to serve, and yeah. we we eventually learned that it that what he did, uh in the past, I think yeah. that that was really neat the way that uh that's the uh, manga does it. Yeah, I really do like the the manga's way of distributing information. Yeah, because it it does it through a lot of really bizarre uh, conversations and. Mm-hmm. 
streams of thought. Mm-hmm. Um, and you, you really do have to pay attention and consider all the different characters' relationships to one another in order to get a full picture of what's going on. Like this one in particular, everything having to do with a cult, it, it is a bit of a puzzle you have to piece together yeah. in order to figure out um, who Pegasus really is. Yeah. Uh, and how how he's going to relate to everyone else going forward. And I mean, there's still like 47 chapters or something left for us to read, but we do get the sense that everything's coming together. Yeah. Um, Shimizu, like the fact that he has these delusions and that he still sees the god of poop, um, yeah. kind of makes sense that he would be imagining that his mom is still alive. Yeah. Um, and we've only ever seen her her arm. It's yep. always peeking out from behind the wall, you know? So when you learn that she's dead, it all kind of clicks together. Well, and, and we all learn that since, that since his childhood. I don't remember if we have like that kind of conversation before between him and his mom in previous main, uh, volume. I, I wouldn't be surprised that um, we have seen that before. I don't remember. I what? Don't the one where it's his mom's hand sticking out from behind the wall and she's yep. like... Don't forget your tissues. Yeah, that I mean that's been the extent of their conversation pretty much that we no, no, no. that we've ever seen. All right, all right. Yep. Yep, yep. Yeah. Cool. So even in the past like she was dead in the past, yeah. Um, yeah, and he I, was I, he was going through the same delusion. Yeah, I just wonder that uh if we have seen their conversation before in previous volume that yes. we haven't noticed that. I I haven't noticed that at all, you know. Oh, I mean, I didn't know that she was dead in previous volumes, but yep. the kind of conversation that they have in this one, they have had in past volumes. And, and she always sticking out her hands like that. Yes, we never oh. see her body. Yeah. Yeah, right. Huh. Yeah, so he, poor she has. Too. All right, he has mental illness, I, I say that. Um, I guess you would classify it like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He suffers from he suffers from delusions. Like yeah. the the same way that Pegasus does probably and a lot of people in that in the ensemble in the cult. I'm sure yeah. that a lot of them do too. Um Yeah, and I mean they've got their two members, right? Because Shimizu has joined and um the, the last guy. member to join <laughs> is the guy with the afro that I've been speculating about. Honestly, I feel like that's just um, that's just misdirection. From yeah. Asano, I don't think that. I don't know what's I gonna don't... happen. Like the 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 Afro guy is probably gonna die or something, and then Pegasus will be like, "Oh, we still need one more member," you know, and that'll be Aiko or Poon Poon or somebody. Well, uh, I do think that he's like a, um, uh, the filler pe- person, you know, like he he not exactly a characters. He just like some random characters in you know in a form of you know. A, a black afro guy yeah so i i i think that you know like he just up here he just appeared to to round up the numbers basically yeah uh, but it, i doesn't matter, matter like who he is yeah but i i, I think that he's the sh- like the the manga is just going to eliminate him like i think that it's just asano playing a trick i don't think All that right. the pegasus ensemble is now complete i think yeah. that that guy is probably just going to end up dead or like forgotten about or something uh, or he just like isn't a good fit, you know, because like the the ensemble can't. We still have Poon Poon, who is not totally connected to this whole thing. Yep. Uh, we still have Aiko, who has ties to the Hoshikawa family, hmm. um, who may join. Like this guy joining can't be the final piece of the puzzle. Like that doesn't that doesn't really make sense. Hmm. Uh, but I mean the. Obviously, the manga is constantly playing with what you expect. Like, for example, the the chapter where uh, Poon Poon and Sachi go to the editor's office, you know, like the 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 manga office, to yep. pitch their work. And there's there's that whole sequence, there's that whole conversation between Sachi and the editor about like the value of ordinary works versus yep. works that are like more more interesting and more fanciful. And after all of after all of that, there's a cutaway to a scene where one of the other editors is on the phone and he's like, yeah, I'd like for uh, I want to smell her pussy to be changed to. I want to bury my nose in it and get a fat whiff. 
All like, right. I, I, I didn't notice that at all. Like, what? Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Are you I, serious? I, that was the highlight of the whole volume for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. The, it's like... But do you remember the scene that I'm talking about where... Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, where Sachi is Sachi is advocating for like the sort of work that Poon Poon is, which is more about uh, ordinary characters, ordinary lives, and their circumstances, which are grounded in the real world. Yep. Um, and the the editor, in response to that, says, "You might be interested to know that not that many people would care yep. about what you have to say about that." And then Asano, I think, is responding to that point of view with the very next panel, which is the one about the editor saying, I'd like to change the dialogue to say I want to bury my nose in it. Um, he's essentially, I think he's making a comment about that mindset where everything just needs to be like omoshiroi. It just needs to be superficially interesting. Yep. That manga needs to be that sort of work. I think he's criticizing that school of thought with that, with that nonsensical, like vulgar panel. Yep. It's really, I was really taken aback by that. And then, like, as I thought more about it, I really started to respect the the whole way that it was ordered. Um, I was like, this, is <laughs> this yeah. isn't the sort of writing that I can totally wrap my head around, but I, I know that it, it feels right. Uh, so. It feels right. <laughs> yeah, it feels um, right, man. <laughs> we need to change that dialogue. Yep. Yeah. Um, what what do you think of of Pegasus run for for the mayor? Is he gonna sus be success? Or just just uh, to no. shake the world, basically. Um, I don't think he's gonna be successful. I think that most like somebody yells out to him when he in chapter ninety, I think, when he's doing his whole speech. Um, pay your taxes, you bum. Yep. You know, I think he's only appealing to people who are on the fringes, like the dregs of society. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think he's going to be successful but I did really like the chapter which was just structured entirely around his televised uh, gubernatorial speech yep. you remember it was like three three panels on every page and it was just him uh, it was just a depiction of his broad of the broadcast yep. uh, I thought I really do like those scenes where Poon Poon does that sort of thing um, where it like mm -hmm. breaks its format and will like kind of follow a rigid structure yep it's done that a few times before the one that's coming to mind right now is uh the one where we see everything through poon poon's point of view like first person point of view his everyday uh, life an, yeah we see an image and then we see his narration of it and then we see an image and then his narration of it and there's a there's a similar chapter in this volume near the end that's right that's right um yeah we we got we're gonna mention that later um, I, I I like the way that the show, uh, sorry, the uh, the main guy does that too. Um, it, you never know what you're gonna get. Yeah, when that's you right. Start reading a new chapter. Uh, it's interesting to see that uh, Pegasu to know that Pegasu actually have a uh, the university uh the bachelor degree <laughs> before does he Rob, before robbing out being a bum. Yep, yep, yep. They mentioned that once before. I think through his uh through his product. Um, okay, I, I mean, I think I remember what you're talking about, but I don't remember getting like 100% confirmation that he Yeah, yeah, I, I, I think he did. And I was like, okay. wow, right. <laughs> well, he, he did independent research on string theory. Yep. I know that much, which, which I don't think is real. Like, All right. I, I think the phrase independent research there is meant to be just him kind of wandering around and being like, oh, yes, the strings of the universe are vibrating in sequence with one another, that sort of mm -hmm. thing. Um, that happened in the beginning of chapter 92 before the televised broadcast. They're announcing him. As uh, seen leaving the uh, Washington University, he has conducted independent research on the super string theory. Right. Yeah. And that's just a bunch of nonsense. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, I think there is potential for his character to be revealed to have been like uh, some sort of genius who had a mental breakdown. Or something because yep. yep. we, we know that the math teacher yep um who is part of the cult and who i think explained his kind of origin story to sachi in, a, mm -hmm. in one scene like he stalks her and he yeah uh, yeah all that and but he he talks about how he met the guy on a college campus 
Uh, and he was yeah. already like unhinged by that point, and he was predicting the future and like telling him what was going to happen to him, right. and it all came true. I feel like the the reason that the math teacher maybe is like drawn to him is because he may recognize that um, Pegasus is was was actually like quite intelligent, um, mm-hmm. and perhaps even on some level he recognizes something about the. I mean, I maybe. Tokyo like society in Japan or even about the state of the world that other people aren't capable of seeing but he just can't express it because he's gone off the deep end and so what people hear from him is just a bunch of nonsense when in reality like what exists inside his mind Mm -hmm. is uh, like far far more truthful than anyone is capable of of comprehending yeah it could be some situation like that or he could just be a madman I don't know right I I, I think uh... I think it's intentional for uh, for Pun Pun the manga to keep that uh, ambiguous, so that um, you know, like in one sense we can um, in one side we can see that he make he making sense, but like uh, normally we we just think that it is just like the madman talking. Yeah, <laughs> uh, well, I mean the the manga is orchestrating all the events to end in six months, like so his prediction must be relevant i guess yep. it, the, like, the, the yeah like the world may not end but it's certainly the way that the manga structures itself is is coordinated with what uh what this guy has to say yep and so I, it's I not really treating love... him as a complete lunatic you know yeah it's just presenting him as one um uh, i'd really love the panels like the the, the double panels that um uh, on the f- first chapter when he um um, when he's storming over the uh the the other mayor candidate uh speech, um, when we see like uh some some spot of beam light go through uh like run through his forehead, yeah. And then well, it, it was it was that weird alien thing, yeah, that shot him. Do you remember? Do you remember that that panel where like during his speech the giant alien. Is like towering over the city, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and it's like wearing a polka dotted shirt, and it has those big lips and a little curly hair on top of its head. Yep. It's a little miniature version of that alien is what shoots him with that beam. Right. That's just so bizarre. Like, yeah. <laughs> is that the god that he sees the same way that Shimizu like sees the god of poop? Maybe. <laughs> I don't know what else it could be. I. It's so bizarre. it's so weird. Like yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> I don't know what to make of it. Oh God, um, yep. Yeah, um, we were mention mentioning about the the manga. Do you think that uh, Sachi manga gonna be like a success or something? Like uh, a success. Like the no. uh, the guy gonna uh, pick that up and c- no. serialize that? No, definitely not. Yeah, it it's a story about about a a withdrawal boy. Yeah, I mean it's Poon Poon's life. Yeah, that's the story. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I really liked the panel during that the pitch meeting where, as the editor begins to describe the story, and there's a, like a lot of speech bubbles on that panel. Yep. You see the background of the the manga office, and it's like packed full of cubicles that are like overflowing with manuscripts and manga pages and like envelopes full of material yep. and yep. you get the sense just from seeing that in the background with poon poon's like pitiful story laid on top of it mm-hmm. that this is not it's like it's not it's not worth anything this is a yep. place of business you know and mm-hmm. poon poon's like self-indulgence writing a story that's just basically his life that no one else is going to be able to relate to because of its specificity and its ordinariness um mm-hmm. like those two things are really contrasted very well um, in that choice of background, just putting all the putting the like the drudgery and the yep. like putting putting the office behind it. Uh, yeah, and I I mean I felt just just from that panel alone, like I I was convinced that Poon Poon's just going to end up miserable. Like this is not going to work out well for him, and I just I felt sympathy for him, even seeing the the choice that Asano made and in, in presenting it that way. Um, I actually not feel bad for Boom Boom, but feel bad for Sachi, who you know, I spent her two years just in his works, 
his uh his writing. She's the one who put her trust in him. Yep. Well, like she's a competent individual, as as emotionally hurt as she is, uh, based on yeah. like her her past and the fact that she has to hide herself behind, you know, the false eyelashes and the plastic surgery and. That she has mm-hmm. these expert- expectations for herself that she may not be able to measure up to. All that is terrible. But she decided to partner up with Poon Poon. That was her yep. choice. Yep, yep, true. And it was the wrong one. Because yeah. Poon Poon, has, as, as of the end of this volume, he's gone. On, he's like had a me- another mental break. Yep. Uh, after the he, chapter where he meets the, the neighbors who live next door and he has that experience... <laughs> uh, the like the slightly homoerotic uh, <laughs> experience that he has. I mean, he's, he's just he's just going nuts. Yeah, he's he's coming. My God, uh, yeah. and he he actually like take the pers- um, not the personality. He take the uh, the names of 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 that guy as well and become that person. Did he? Yeah. He. I know he Takashi. took the name Takashi. Was Takashi the guy's name? Takashi oh, you're right. Was, yep. Dude, I can't he, believe I missed that. He actually took the uh, took the surname as well, so like took the whole identity of that guy. Yeah, but you know, okay, yeah, yeah, you're right. Um, I, I don't know how I missed that connection. Pegasus's name is Toshiki. All right, Toshiki. which is pretty close to Takashi. So I think I was a little bit thrown by the similarities in names there. But yeah, yeah, he I mean and he does he does adopt that identity because he starts like pursuing women much more forwardly. Um and he thinks to himself like when he meets that cute girl with the glasses at the DMV and they start getting along really well, he thinks to himself like in a moment of ecstasy. This is too fucking easy. Like he's he's so uh in in love with it, like his newfound power and himself, and like he thinks that the world belongs to him. Yeah. Uh, but then, Aiko emerges to show him that that's not true. Yeah, or uh, uh, not. I think the reason that they're juxtaposed like that is because he's not going to be able to, you know, relate to Aiko the same way that he can relate to women now, even in this new like uh, state that he's found yeah. himself. And and look at he he have like whole like wear full, fully clothed now, he not right. he he's not a pyramid anymore. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's know. supposed to be like a stud now, you know. Yep. So you need that sense of physicality. I think he needs to have the like a frame that is kind of attractive bigger, nerves. perhaps than the. <laughs> what'd you say? Oh, attractiveness. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, pretty much. Like he, he has to have a frame that's like larger than, than the average woman, I suppose. Um, so that his his status as the man can be like yep. visually enforced, I guess. Uh, but it's not it's not going to work out with Ico. I, I don't know what she's going to say to him. But yep. I mean, uh-huh. they, their promise still stands that she's supposed to be the one to kill him, I guess. Yep. Uh, and he they, already backed out of killing himself. Yep. All right. All right. So, talking about that, we, we haven't mentioned um, um, the landlord and his, you know, he being accused of uh, shoplifting. Yeah. And and what is the deal of the of the woman who are accu- accusing him? What's her deal? I don't. I don't know. I mean, I think we're supposed to assume that she's just like some troublemaker. She did it for kicks. Huh. Um, I, I would as for thought that she was, you know, like some kind of in the cult member as well. Right. No, I don't think so because um, uh, Pegasus follows her and like spies on her and sees her license plate. And mm-hmm. I think the fact that he like there was a there was a panel that was just a close up of her license plate on her bike. Mm-hmm. I think that's going to be relevant going forward like Sachi makes a comment in one of the later chapters in this volume about how she wants to get revenge yep um and you know the landlord begs her not to but i i feel like the the fact that we we like we had a character follow her and and see that bit of information about her the license plate Mm -hmm. makes me think she's going to pop back up like something bad is going to happen to her all right 
Huh. I don't know. Hard to predict. This is a hard, this story is hard to predict. Yeah. I I I just know for one thing that uh Pun Pun and Aiko are gonna go to the Choni that day on my promise. Oh, you think they're actually gonna go to like whatever city? Yeah, I that was that they were gonna go to. I do think so. Yeah, maybe. I mean, it's not as though Pun Pun has the sort of life that it would be hard for him to leave behind. Right. In right. fact, he left behind a lot of his physical. I this actually wasn't even a note that I took down, but I'm remembering now that he he uh, threw out most of his possessions. Like in no. in the wake of whatever psychotic break he had when he was like jerking off to the thought of this guy, uh, what's How his name awesome again? Takashi. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I, I think it was after that that he, or maybe it was before that he was throwing away all his stuff. Like, yep. all of his worldly possessions disgusted him. And hmm. it must have been before, actually, because it's Aiko, it's Takashi who offers to give him a hand with, like, the recycling or something. Mm-hmm. And that's when he learns his name. Um, but, yeah, Pun, Pun Pun is, like... And the thing that brings all this on is that uh, he has a dream and, and God appears again for the first time in a while. Yeah, and um, and it seemed that uh, Pegasus appeared in that dream as well. Yeah, yeah, he did. It's Pegasus talking to him. Uh, I mean, Pegasus also invaded Mimura's dream. Do you remember Mimura yeah, was yeah, dreaming yeah. and Pegasus came in through like a door of light? Right, right. Um, so he, he comes into Pun Pun's dream this time. And yeah, and God, and God is there as well. And Poon Poon like rejects the idea of cooperating with Pegasus because he says I can't do it, and yep. that's when God like kind of takes over and says Welcome back. And I think the implication there is Poon Poon is like he's losing it again uh, mm-hmm. mentally. Like God having reappeared again is 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 kind of a representation of the fact that he is sliding downhill. Huh. Well. And and then like in in later chapter we see like the whole day of um, of of Pun Pun again like by by his narration. This time though it's yeah. like the whole the whole text, like the whole world yeah. text. Yep. Interesting choice, and uh, I I don't know if you noticed but like uh, at the end of the uh, of the volume, we have like the whole the whole text putting all together. Yes, I did see that page. Yeah, it's like a double page with all the text yeah, on it. That's right. Yep. Huh. And it was I mean, I think it was really I think it was really appropriate uh that they that it be presented that way because it's right after he has that dream and slides back into, you know, depression or, or craziness, what whatever it is that mm-hmm. he's suffering from. So he would be like trapped inside his own head, basically. He wouldn't be able yep. to think of things from another perspective. Um, so he mm-hmm. would just be totally wrapped up in his own thoughts, and that's exactly what we get in the chapter that comes right afterwards. Right. Um, even when he like takes that massive shit at his uh, mm-hmm. at his convenience store <laughs> part time job, yep. Yep. and he he hears the laughter of his coworkers coming in from under the door, and yep. he he thinks to himself like maybe it's time I quit this part time job too. Um, that's that's like he he's obsessed with himself like he he assumes that what they're laughing at is him but we don't know that mm-hmm. we don't know if yeah. they heard him take him at a huge dump like an old like a middle-aged man or whatever whatever the text yeah. was they could have been laughing about anything but poon poon can't escape his like his own thoughts and so everything is revolving around him right now right hi uh he's uh he's in trouble i mean yeah. he's been in trouble since chapter one but He's, uh, I mean, the closer we get to Pegasus's six month, uh, like apocalypse window, uh, yep. closing, you know, the, the more trouble he seems to be in. And even though he's, like I said before, he's not re- he's not that closely related to this doomsday plot. I mean, he's seen Pegasus on the television. He dreamed about him once. Um, and I guess Pegasus did pose the question, like, do you want to become a member of the ensemble? But Poon Poon's just like, no. No, I I can't do it. I have work tomorrow. So would you yeah. would you please leave? Because I have yeah. I got to get up early tomorrow for work. So That's he's right. not he's not really he's not really totally like closely linked to what's going on with the the cult. But at the same time, like the the feeling that 
something terrible is going to happen is like connecting their stories almost. And、um, what is his relationship with Sachi now? They're not really that close together. Yeah, because he spends all of his time like crying in his apartment <laughs> after he got the the rejection from the the person, the the editor. Yep. He yep. just started spending all of his time alone in his apartment doing nothing. Yep. <sighs> all right. Uh, it's it just, pretty it depressing just, stuff. I know it's just getting down here from here. I I, I don't know like with um with this new meeting with um Aiko, things gonna look stuck up a lot, but I I doubt so. No, things are definitely not gonna look up. Uh, but、yeah. they might become、Aiko、more is, omoshidoi. Might yeah, become well, more interesting. Aiko is, yeah, Aiko is a also broken person as well. Yes, yeah, she definitely is. Oh, we the there was a detail about her. Like she's become a, a model.、Uh, oh, remember yeah, Seki? Yeah. Seki says like congratulations on your. I saw you in a, in a magazine. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. You did a photo shoot. Congrats on your like your career. And she says you must be mistaken. Yep. You know, so I wonder what the deal is there. Right. All right, we was we we will know for sure in the in the next volume. Now that I,、uh, I guess, yeah, they meet each other.、Uh, yeah. Excuse me. All right.、Um, do you have any、yeah. other notes on?、Uh, I do. I have a lot more actually, but all right. <laughs> I'm kind of tired and I want dinner. It just turned nine p.m. where I'm at, so I know it's late for you as well. All right. Wait, wait, no. Are the times are reversed? It's early for you. <laughs> yep. Okay. It's lunch time for me now. Yeah. Uh. All right. So let's just wrapping up. Okay.、Um, Spring. Right, uh, winter's how, over. Yep. How do you think about the the winter season as a whole? That is going to depend on how good the the final episode of、uh, Dora Hadoro is. Yep. Honestly,、yeah. like it's gonna depend on that a lot for me, because that's a show that、yeah. I've been enjoying a lot. And if it can stick the landing, I'll I'll be like, man, anime isn't isn't terrible after all. But if it <laughs> if it messes up, I'm gonna be like, man, why do I even watch this?、Screw、why do、it. I even watch <laughs> all any of this? Yeah, pretty much. All right. How about、There's、you?、Uh, any any shows that we like? If there was one show that you can name that you really liked the season that we didn't talk about, I mean,、oh, I I actually know what it is already. Yeah, I I I think it's just like the fight between、uh, Doro Hidoro and、uh, Ishogen for for the top spot. What about?、So、I was thinking just... Kyoko Suiri or however you say. Um, it. it's alright. I still enjoy it. It it take that long, t- uh, to to get to finish the case though. There, there is one case that served at the central, um, um, at the central for for the whole season. It it took like、yeah. nine episodes for that, and I I don't think it deserved that. Ooh, it could、okay. be easily done in in like three or four episodes. They just make it way too long. In that, Ooh, that that's in in that sounds like in the act a nineties anime series, just stretching everything out to the point of yeah, like boredom. You will know when you see it <laughs> if, if if you're ever invested to. Yeah, I plan on、uh, giving it a second chance before、right. this year is over. You know, trying to wrap everything up in 2020. I'll I'll watch it again. We'll see. Yep. All right.、Uh, so next week we're gonna do like a, a special podcast for、uh, Genius Party Shot. Yeah. And,、um, and Poon Poon. Volume. Are we gonna、10. do Poon Poon? Okay. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna boo boo boo. Yeah,、well. yeah, might as well.、All、Sounds、right. good. Sounds good. We're gonna watch a film instead of all these terrible, <laughs> badly concluding、She's、TV shows that just make me depressed. You know, I'm probably not depressed about that. I'm probably just depressed because I read more、uh, poon poon. Anime is probably great, <laughs> and I just can't even realize it right now because I'm just、uh, stuck in my. You know? Yeah, it it does it does sort of make you depressed. So if you feeling depressed, it does a good job. So, it... 
Perfect for me. <laughs> All right. All right. Um, We're done. So see you guys next week. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye.